Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Oh my gosh, stop, why are you the cutest thing in the entire universe? If we haven't met before, hi, my name is Tabitha and I am an ethical breeder of winter white hamsters. And so this is Happy Hamstery and I am gonna be showing you how I set up a pregnancy bin when one of our winter white hamsters is pregnant and expecting to give birth. And so I'm gonna just give you the whole spiel because maybe you have a hamster that you adopted from a pet store and sadly the hamster is pregnant and you are trying to prepare to sort out how in the world do you prepare a pregnancy bin for a hamster and you just don't want to make any mistakes and so I am here to hopefully help you with some of those things. Of course I do not encourage in any way shape or form breeding hamsters in order to produce offspring unless you understand the genetics, unless you understand who the parents were and the health issues or concerns that the parents had. If you don't know those things and you decide to breed hamsters what you're doing is called back yard breeding and this is not helpful it is very selfish and it does not better the hamster species it actually continues to perpetuate the problem of them having poor genetic lines which then results in having a life that is not as long as what a healthy winter white purebred hamster would have so let's go ahead and get into it i am going to put a bin down below here and I'm gonna turn the camera down and we are going to put together a pretend cage, like a mock cage. It's not gonna be actually for any of the pregnant hamsters right now because all of the hamsters have already given birth here that I am breeding right now. And so I don't plan on breeding anymore for like another one or two or three months just because we have enough hamsters right now. And so those hamsters will go to their homes and then we would breed more. So, wow, that was the long winded explanation. So here we go. First, I just want to show you my cute little bear fuzzy socks. Aren't they so cute? Oh, they're so cute. I got them. I'll put the link down below where I got them. They're probably still available. But um, what I do first is I take um, bedding from the previous hamster's enclosure because I want the bedding to smell like them. So I'm just going to dump this in. Okay, perfect. So we have that. And then I fluff it out. What I would do is take bedding from the enclosure. I would make sure it's not the bedding that has the pee in it, of course, but this way um, it will be a less stressful of a transfer because if it is not their bedding, it's going to be very stressful and that's the last thing you want to happen during their pregnancy. So this is perfect. I do not put a lot of shavings in there. It is very important to have the least amount of shavings possible because you need to be able to observe their behaviors as much as possible to be weighing them every evening to see how they're pregnant is progressing. You want to make sure that you are um, checking them to make sure there's no health concerns or issues. You also need to be aware of when the pups are born because that's when you need to be able to start keeping track of how long the pups have been with the mother to remove them from the mother on the correct day. The number one item that I recommend having is a multi-chamber hide. Oh my gosh. I have to borrow one of the hamster's multi-chamber hides to make this video and he was sleeping in it. It's so Cute. He literally looks like a raccoon because he's losing his winter coat. It's so funny. <laughs> Espresso, why are you so cute? To me, I don't know if you know the breed of cat of the ragdoll breed, but that's literally what he reminds me of. He's just so chunky and fluffy and uh, Espresso is so cute and you're so beautiful. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. I have to steal your multi-chamber hide. I hope that's not a problem. Okay. <gasps> okay. So, I will put a multi-chamber hide in. I always put it in the corner, but I leave a little bit of space for the hamster to walk around. This is important because when they're pregnant, they don't realize how big their tummy is. And so they will try to like scoot into sections that are a little bit too tight and you don't want them to hurt the babies inside of them or hurt themselves. So just leaving a little bit of a gap for them to do that is great. Then I go ahead and I add tunnels. So I want the mom to feel safe and secure the whole time she's out in the open in this area of the cage. So I grab things like a bendy bridge. I love bendy bridges. Um, my favorite place to put them is right on the opening of the multi-chamber hide. So it just gives a little bit of an extra coverage for that area. The next thing I like to add is what I call the mom hide. This is 
a small little spot in the enclosure that's separated from where they normally build their nest and it's so funny you'll see the mom sleeping there like sometimes two or three times in a day what she'll do is she'll go nurse the pups then they'll fall asleep she'll leave them alone and she'll go have like mom time she just wants time alone from her pups and so that's what I call this hide is the mom hide it's so cute and so by the mom hide I always put the water bottle this way she has access to water whenever she wants then I like to add another tunnel so let me find a tunnel somewhere this is the perfect tunnel and so then I like to put the tunnel normally facing to the mom hide but I don't think we have enough space in this um, tote to do that so this will do for right now but then she has access to go all the way to her little hide if she needs and she also has a tunnel and then I like to add another hide here and another hide here I want as much coverage as possible but everything needs to be safe so I don't like to put um, things that could potentially be an issue for a baby hamster so far I haven't had any issues with the bendy bridges but I do recommend making sure that if you see openings and holes stick some moss in there because the pups feet are so much smaller than the mom's feet and they could be more of a hazard in getting stuck than the the mom's so that's always good to look for cork logs have been great if you're concerned about it you could use a paper toilet paper tube which would work great uh, but okay let's do the next thing that I would add espresso feels like I'm stealing all his stuff and he's a man but he's gonna be the pregnant mom in this demonstration so I'm gonna put him in the cage while we're doing this <laughs> but um, I would use then a food dish to cover the top hole. I want it to be as dark as possible in there. And then what I use this for is I will put their seed mix in that um, bowl because when they're pregnant and they're especially when they're like three to five days from giving birth, I don't want them to feel the stress of having to roam around the cage collecting food. I want them to be able to add as much food as they want to their hoard. So I put this here and then I also use um, another bowl for fruits and veggies. So let me grab that now. Here would be our fruits and veggies dish. You want to make sure if your hamster is about to give birth in like three to four days that you remove the wheel and you remove the sand bath and any sort of um, things that could be dangerous. So like pokey hides. Um, I have a great example of this. Here is an example of an adorable little willow basket that I have, but I don't know if you can tell. I'll try to focus the camera, but um, the hamster that had this bit a bunch of holes in the basket, which is good, but these are all really, really pokey. And I noticed when she was pregnant, she was trying to fit through these holes and then a couple times she like squeaked. And I was like, that is so not okay. So I had to remove this from her enclosure and this could be dangerous for the pups too. So just, this is just a great example of that. Okay, so here would be another hide that I would add. And then sometimes I add a dig box, um, especially if they're a little bit further out from their pregnancy and I want them to have some sort of enrichment, I would grab a little dig box that would look like this. So I would probably put this on top of the lid since it doesn't really fit right here, but if I had a smaller little box, I could put it there. And this is actually a sand bath, but I love to use cocoa fiber. Cocoa fiber is a great soft substrate that can be fun for them to dig in and the pups go wild for cocoa substrate not least i love peekaburros they look like this um i had one as an add-on in our spring box and so sorry espresso i gotta move you for a second can you just go in there go in the mom hide <laughs> um and so this is a perfect little tunnel that um a lot of times it's crazy when a hamster has a larger litter they'll separate their litter and so most of the time i've experienced it being um two different parts of the multi-chamber hide, but sometimes they'll put one litter in here and then they'll take half of the litter and put it in another hide. And this way the pups can't find each other because it's such a far distance. And the mom will come, Espresso, I'm gonna borrow your body for a second. The mom will come over here, she'll nurse her pups in here and then she'll go back in there. <laughs> Wait, you're supposed to act. Espresso, you're supposed to act like the mom. Go in there. Espresso, espresso, espresso. Go, 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 go in there, go be a mom and she'll go nurse her pups. Just kidding, <laughs> you won't. <laughs> so funny but anyway so this is how I would set up the enclosure and then I would make sure that if the mom hamster had a food hoard in her enclosure I would grab that from the cage and I would put it in one of the multi-chamber hides that's just a super helpful um, thing for the hamster because it's a super stressful time being pregnant because their number one goal is to collect as much food as possible because what are you trying to do because they literally are going to be nursing their pups for almost 20 days and so during that time of nursing, they aren't going to be able to be going out and foraging for as much food. They're going to be with their pups so much or they're going to be sleeping. And so 
ma'am, sir, you just completely removed that from the hole. You're supposed to use this as a ladder. <laughs> so funny. Why are you the cutest thing in the universe? But anyway, um, what were we just saying? Oh, so it's really important that their number one goal is going to be collecting food to make sure that they have enough food for their pups to start eating from the nest without actually leaving the whole nest. Obviously, you shouldn't be breeding the hamsters, but to tell you, some breeders recommend like setting up the pregnancy enclosure and only separating them like three to four days before they're gonna give birth. But I personally do the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> this could be crazy, but the way I feel about it is like, if I was a mom hamster, I would want all the time in the world to be able to prepare my space for my baby hamsters. And so, I feel like putting them in literally two to three days before they're about to give birth, that is so stressful. And so putting them into the, the enclosure that they're gonna be giving birth in as soon as possible is what I personally recommend because then they have time to make everything smell like themselves. They have time to feel comfortable with the space, to learn it's not a threat. They have time to build their food hoard in a place that they feel comfortable and they're aware of where it is. And so that's my personal preference. And when I do that, I do include a sand bath and I do include a wheel. and I. Just just make sure I remove that prior to birth because I don't want them to be running on the wheel when they're literally like about to pop. So yeah, that is all the things that I would be adding to their enclosure. Okay, so I'd also grab a Whimsy Chew and a Millet Spray. I would probably break off that edge right there and put this over the cork log like that. That way if they have some sort of um, thing to do other than just eat food in the night, but they also will be really preparing for their babies. And so you can provide like nesting material. So things like toilet paper that are soft and fluffy so that they can put that in their nest. But most of the time, hamsters are so fascinating. They can tell which parts of the paper bedding they think is softest. And so then they'll like stick it in their mouth you want to show them for me? No, that's my finger. That's my finger. That's my finger. That's my finger. Where are you bringing me? Where, where, where are we going? Yes. Okay. Well, this is the enclosure. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am going to let outro Tabitha close us out over there because she's got something to tell you. Espresso. Tell them bye. Bye. I think you'd really love to watch this video next. It is my top 10 Amazon finds and they're like hidden gems that I have found on Amazon that I think your hamster would so love. I use them in the hamstery every day and I'm literally obsessed. I'll see you over there next. <laughs> Bye.